Hello viewers, today I am going to demonstrate you an approach to the proximal aspect of the radius. I have been getting this request for a long, long time and today th I thought that I will take you through this approach. Now if you are coming to my YouTube channel for the first time, I would advise you to kindly subscribe it and you will find many useful videos for your clinical practice. I have already uploaded a fracture fixation of a forearm uh, in which you will see how to uh, use um, the Henry approach for the middle fracture uh, and I've also uploaded uh, fracture fixation of the distal radius in which you see the distal uh, aspect of the Henry incision. Now today my aim is to take you step by step as how to do an anterior Henry approach uh, if you have to fix the proximal part of the radius. So our patient today is a 48 year old right hand a dominant gentleman who unfortunately uh, was involved in a road traffic accident and sustained this injury to his left uh, radius around a month ago. Um, as uh, very common in India, he was seen by a local practitioner and then he has presented to us with persistent pain. Now, if you can see, there is a multifragmentary fracture of uh, the left radius. Now, it is not very proximal, but uh, I'm sure when we are going to expose it, we need to expose it uh, at least up to here, from here. So, I should be able to show you every single anatomy that is relevant and important when you are doing an anterior Henry approach for a proximal uh, radius short fracture. So, I'll show you as how to do this procedure safely without uh, compromising posterior intraosseous nerve. So this is our theater position. Our patient is supine. We are going to use tonique. The hand is on the hand table. Uh, because it's the left hand, sorry, it's the left hand and I am a left-handed person. So I'm going to sit on this side. CRM is going to come on the top. My image screen will be on my left side and trolley will be here. So the next step will be to mark our skin incision. So the landmark for our skin incision is this biceps tendon. So you hook the biceps tendon and you stay lateral to it. You don't want to be going medial to the tendon because your artery is medial. Now this is your FCR. So I'm just going to take something like a diathermy. And this is our fracture site. Um, and I will make a straight incision. Now historically, if you read the books, they will say mark it distally it is brachioradialis. But I do the slight modified uh, version in which we take FCR, not the brachioradialis, as our landmark for the incision. So I'm just going to take my diathermy like this, and then I will mark my skin incision. Now, this fracture is a bit distal, but I will try to make my exposure slightly proximally so that I can see and I can show you the important uh, stuff. So first is just marking of the skin. And as you can see, we have fit uh, some veins, superficial veins. So I'm just going to do some hemostasis and I will join you back. So carry on with your dissection in the same line. And then you will take away the fat down. Just be careful about these superficial veins. You can see one vein is crossing on this side. So I'll try to protect it if I can. So stay in the same line. Now the first thing you will see is the cutaneous nerve. And you can start seeing this here. I will just dissect it a little bit. This is your cutaneous nerve. And try to protect and respect every single cutaneous nerve that you see. There's no point uh, cutting it because you're not going to anything, gain anything. However, if you cut it, they can form a painful neuroma. So I'm just going to dissect it and then I will join you back. So, so far we have uh, taken skin down, subcutaneous tissue, fat layer down. This is the cutaneous nerve which I have tried to protect it. If at all you have to sacrifice some small branches, it's okay. I have also mobilized some superficial veins out of my um, surgical field. And then I'm going to reposition my self-retaining retractor and carry on dissection in the same line. So the next step will be to just divide this fascia. And you can see the brachioradialis is actually far, far medial than, than you will expect. The brachioradialis is a big muscle. And here it is almost halfway down and sometimes more than halfway down. So you just need to identify the brachioradialis first. So you can see this, this is the brachioradialis, this is the margin here. And the good thing about 
a good surgery is that you don't damage too much muscle. So I'm just going to keep on dissecting it. And you can see this is the medial margin of the bericoridialis. So I'm just going to use something like a 15 blade. To just identify the medial margin. So I'm not doing anything. I'm just working on the edge of the bericoridialis. And then I will lift this bericoridialis. So let me do a little bit of dissection. Now as you dissect bericoridialis, you will see some small uh, vessels here. You just need to coag them and then cut them so that you can mobilize. And these are some small branches from the radial artery, which we call the recurrent radial artery. And as soon as I'm lifting it, the next important structure that you will see is this beautiful superficial um, radial nerve. So I'm just trying to show you the recurrent, uh, sorry, superficial radial nerve. This is another leech of branch. So if you read Hoppenfield, which is, I think, probably one of the best Surgical exposure, surgical exposure book by far, you will see that they have also mentioned it. So this is your superficial radial nerve. I think the scissor is not great, but if I dissect this out, can you see it? This is your superficial radial nerve. So try to protect and see every structure, and that is a sign of a good surgery. So I'm just going to work my way a little bit proximally and I will dissect this nerve, and then when it's free, I'll join you back. Our uh, superficial radial nerve identified and protected. So, so far you can see we have reflected the brachioradialis here, then we have taken the flexors here, and now what you see is we're not cutting anything actually, we're just working in between the fascia layers and then trying to reach the bone. So just, I will carry on with my dissection here. And there's nothing important here now. So just carry on dissecting this fascia. And reach proximally. Now key is that you don't want to be going anyway medial to the biceps tendon. So I think because this factor is quite uh, not so proximal, I will not be able to show the proximal part, but I think I will try my best to show everything that you need to see if you are dealing with a proximal third um, fracture of the radial shaft. So now this is our superficial dissection done. We have taken the brachioradialis and the flexor muscles on the other side. This is uh, your radial nerve. And the radial artery is also on this side, that is on the medial side. Um, now I'm just carrying my dissection, the deep dissection. I'm just going to take this fascia down. And the muscle that you see here is your, if I clear it, should be the pronator teres. So the, the interval, the intramuscular interval which we work is brachioradialis and pronator teres. So this is our pronator teres. Can you see this? This is going and attaching on to the radius. So this is your pronator teres. So now once you have done your superficial dissection, you will see this supinatal muscle. So it's right in the front here. Now, before you start cutting the supinatal muscle, then the most important thing is the position of the hand. Now, the, uh, the posterior interosseous nerve, which is the most important structure for this particular approach, uh, goes underneath it. So in order to displace it, you need to supinate the hand so that the nerve can displace laterally as well as posteriorly. So this is the position of the hand. You should have to keep the hand supinated when you are doing your deep dissection and we are trying to reflect the supinator. And once you have done that, your next step will be to do and reflect the supinator muscle so that you can see the proximal aspect of the radius. So let me reposition my retractor and then I will join you back. So, so this is um, the approach. I think we are almost there. Now this is your brachioradialis there. This is your pronator teres. This is the fracture site. So I'm, this is where the fracture is. So even if your fracture was slightly proximal, uh, you should be able to do everything that I am showing you in this x-ray. So this is your supinator. Now we have kept our forearm completely supinated. And if you can feel here, this is 
the border or this is the medial border of the radius. So I'm just going to take a knife there and I'm going to start dissection in the uh, starting from the um, medial border of the radius. So if you see here, if I just work, you can feel actually the radius there. So I'm just going to uh, put dissect with a 15 blade right up to the bone and you can start seeing the bone. Can you see it? You will start seeing the bone. So once you start seeing the bone, then all you need is a good periosteum elevator to reflect it up. So let me take some periosteal um, elevator and then I will join you back. So just use a periosteum and try to reflect it. So you can see, you can start seeing the proximal aspect of the radius. So this is whole of a proximal radius. If I'm just going to put a self retainer there, you can see here, this is all proximal radius. And we are very, very proximal. So even if the factor was, the factor is here, even if it was here, you should be able to put a DCP. So I'm just going to clear this up and we'll show you everything that you need to see. And this is your approach to the proximal radius. So you can see, you can see, this is elbow joint. This is right elbow joint. And you can see the whole of the radius. So this is how you do it. So let me clear this up bit proximally and then I will join you. So now you can see, we can see whole of the proximal. This is uh, proximal radius. This is, if uh, Rakesh can show, this is the biceps tendon. Now this is the whole of the proximal radius. Now, one important thing is that I have put a human retractor, but my retractor is quite distal. Never ever try to put a retractor proximal, uh, especially on the lateral side when you are working across the proximal aspect, because then you have very good chance that you may cause traction injury to the posterior interosseous nerve. Now, if you can see here, this is a bicep tendon. So you're very, very proximal, and you can see the whole of the shaft. Now, I will now further carry on after reflecting the spinoita teres as I would normally um, do for uh, uh, mid shaft radius and uh, ulna fracture. So I'm going to carry on and carry on with my fixation, but I just wanted to show you the approach. I think fixation principles will be pretty much uh, similar. So on this occasion, because it is a multi-fragmentary fracture, I'm going to use the plate in a bridge mode, or at least I will not compress it. So this is how you do an exposure or do a proximal uh, Henry approach for a proximal third radius uh, fracture. So guys, this is our final fixation done. You can see we have reduced it anatomically. Now this was a month old fracture, so nothing in India comes easy. However, we managed to do a good job. Now in terms of closure, I have not shown you, I've shown you closure for the middle part and the distal part. In terms of the deep closure, uh, it is pretty straightforward. I have just left a sleeve of supinator, so I'm just going to put some tag stitch. I like to reproduce or recreate the anatomy that I have disturbed, so I'm just going to put some stitches here. You can see I am trying to recreate the supinator that we reflected. So I'm, once I have uh, done that, I will show you how it looks. So you can see now that I have beautifully recreated uh, the supinator and our plate is almost uh, more than 60% covered. So even if the fracture is a bit distal here, you still have to dissect proximally uh, and reflect the supinator and following the same principles as you would do for a slightly more proximal uh, fracture. So this is our deep uh, closure done. Uh, rest will be just straightforward approximation of these muscles and then fat layer and the skin layer as you would uh, do in routine. So we was, this was a demonstration of how to do an anterior Henry approach for fixation of proximal third radius uh, fracture. I have tried to show you in a step-by-step -step fashion as what important structures you will encounter and how to identify and protect them. I'm sure this video will give you confidence while fixing a proximal third radius fracture and you will find it useful in your clinical practice. Please give us a thumbs up as it keeps us going. Please do subscribe and do share our channel. Thank you.